Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to tonight's story from the book Stories of Don Bosco by Peter Lapin. That's a piece of wood that I'm going to use for uh, a piece of furniture, and I need to add wheels to it. So that's the bottom. But I don't have the money at this moment. Because I bought a pole saw. Come over here, please, so that I don't have to go over there. Say again? Do you see that flashlight over there? It's. This one's light. This one's power. Oh. Thank you, sir. Life, Life at the oratory. At the oratory. When the boys began to play tournament with Don Bosco, the program set up for them and the beginning was very simple. They came down to the study hall at 5.30. Later, they attended mass during which they said morning prayers, recited the rosary, and listened to a short spiritual reading. To enable the greatest number to receive communion, he heard confessions either the night before or early in the morning, so that there was always daily communicants, while on Sunday nearly everyone received. In the beginning, Don Bosco gave the boys a few cents to buy breakfast on the way to work. After a few, after a morning at work or at school in the city, they returned at noon for dinner. Each boy went up to the steaming pot, and uh, either Margaret, one of the older boys, or Don Bosco ladled out a soup made from rice and potatoes, pasta and beans, or chestnuts and corn flour. The last was a favorite for the boys. On special occasion, occasions, cheese, dried codfish, or a sausage was served with the soup. That's all they ate? Yes, my soup? son. Soup? That's it. Oh, wow. They were probably skinny, but they were probably strong boys, like, accustomed to hard work. Yeah. If the weather was good, they ate in the yard, sitting on benches, stones, or tree stumps. If bad, they sat in one of the rooms or on the stairs. Dinner over, each washed his bowl and spoon. Spoons were important items, each taking care of his own since if he lost it, he had to buy another. One boy who let his spoon fall on the floor of the classroom was surprised when the others teased him about it. Do you think, was his reaction, I'd leave my spoon at the oratory? As for Don Bosco's meals, on Sunday, his mother prepared a dish of vegetables, sometimes mixed with tiny, with tiny pieces of meat or egg, which should would be served, warmed up for several days in a row. If this threatened to turn sour, he would freshen it up with a drop of oil or vinegar. For the re for the rest, he was so unconcerned about food that one day, no, that once he arrived too late for supper and not wishing to disturb anyone went to the kitchen and, and in the dark found what appeared to be a bowl of soup. The next morning he learned that he had eaten not a bowl of soup, but a bowl of paste which had been left there to stiffen by the bookbinders. Uh -huh. Prayers followed classes and then it was off to bed. These were nothing more than mattresses stuffed with straw or dry leaves laid along two planks and raised from the ground by bricks or blocks of wood. Don Bosco and his mother did all the housework of which the boys were not capable. He did not hire outside help, not only because he could not afford it, but even more so because he did not want outsiders to disturb the family atmosphere and the spirit of piety he was trying to form among the boys. Margaret looked after the kitchen, the laundry, and the linen. He saw to the cleanliness of the boys, helped make the beds, combed the hair of the youngest, swept out of the 
swept out the rooms and the little chapel, drew water from the well, shelled beans and peeled potatoes. When called on, he repaired benches and chairs, chopped wood, cut and stitched the boys' pants and jackets. With the skills he had learnt during his school days, he could even, in a couple hours, turn out a boy's suit. At the end of the day, he and Margaret would go around the beds, picking up clothes that needed mending, and have them ready for tomorrow. Those were heroic days. The boys were so poor that most of them had not sufficient clothing, and several times Don Bosco appealed to the government for cast-off military capes. He himself once made good use of a military cape. Coming home drenched from the heavy rains, he discovered that he had no second cassock or second pair of pants. He had to be content with the pair of white pants a benefactor had given, and cover the rest of his body with the military cape. What an odd sight he must have presented when he came down to church for night prayers. Another time, it was so cold in church that he told the boys to bring their blankets to keep themselves warm. Imagine all of that work that he did. He would approve of what Booker T. Washington said. At this school, we teach three things. Intelligence, skilled hands, and morality. So, we have been given a bunch of clothes. We don't need it. We need the uh, space. We need the real estate. We're going to pass it on. Yes, sir? What are all those cassettes? All those cassettes, my son, I'm supposed to turn them into videotapes or digital. Who are they? Well, and one of them is your great-grandfather's voice. Oh, Please so don't play that, that, with that book. Yes, some of them might be family. I need to process them. Also, over here I have a thousand books I need to get into, but I'm not able to get to them yet. There is much I want to teach you. It's, it's wonderful that I'm still alive and I'm able to teach you things. How was your outing at the LA Fitness? Ah, oh, it was terrible. Because? Well, first of all, we were ready. We were all ready. But then we signed in. The guy called us back and said, "It's only covered for an hour." So <laughs> you're not allowed to be there or use any of the equipment. Nope. So what did you say? Well, I didn't say it. Mom said she wanted to cancel and he said talk to your insurance company. Insurance company? Yeah, apparently her insurance pays for it. So she has to talk to the insurance to not pay for it anymore because why have someone pay something for you to use if you're not going to use it? Mom said she's not going to work out enough. So. I understand. And also, the last time we were there, the first time we were there actually, mm -hmm. The woman that was signing us up said, like, oh, one account can have two guests. All right. So. Were you guests today? Yeah, but, like, I don't even know what happened. Were you allowed to be in, inside and use the equipment? No. I so, didn't get anything done. So you just went there for a, a drive and then drove back home. Oh, well. Work with me, son. You saw all the work I did today. I would have appreciated if you would have stuck around and helped me. You learn a thousand things. And later you'll say, oh wow, all of these skills are very useful. Don't leave me out there all by myself. Huh? Yeah. You're silent, man. I mean, like, I'll try not to.
Are you abandoning me now? No. Oh, no, I, I, that, that, I was, no. I was trying to not get like sweaty and stuff. All right. Oh, look. With me, there is a lot of work. If you do this work, you'll become more intelligent than you are at this time. You're already very intelligent, but you must have the skills. You must have the skills. Speaking of skills, do you yes. think Anthony's going to pick up any good skills in the Scouts? You'd be amazed. Some of the uh, children that were... What's the picture of? That's like the only picture in this book. And is it the native uh, native, native people? Here. Native? Okay, so in that he talks about his visions. Don Bosco, maybe he didn't have visions. Maybe he actually traveled there without his body or with his body, but in some miraculous way. He talked about the Americas and coming here. Okay, back on track. So, you think Anthony so, was... some children, for instance, Einstein, I think he he flunked second grade. Mm -hmm. So, and yet he became such a powerful person in the world. So, we don't know where we will end up. I am La Cuarta Lora. Do you know what that means? I am the old bird with oh. a few feathers. And I am the boss man. But how much time do I have left, son? My life has been painful in some ways, right? All that I want to teach you, if you reject it, then your life will be painful because you will not learn from my mistakes or like I tell the children in Facebook, the ones that write to me. What do I tell them? What do you tell them? I tell them to learn three things. Intelligence, skilled hands, and morality. But it's like, it's one of them, he took me on on that. And he became a, he said, I couldn't find for carpentry, so I, I install windows now. I work with aluminum. I told him, that's fantastic, that's fine, well done. Somebody has plans for you. God has plans for you. But if you don't listen to me, then... Or, yes, I believe God put you in my life for a reason. So God has plans for you, but there are many people that have plans for you too, son. And you're not going to like what their plans are. They want to use you, they want to steal from you, and so on. Become a tradesman. Carpentry, plumbing, electricity, all of these things. You're actually not learning them in your school, are you? No. Do not. kids are. What? Stun kids are. Are you one of them? No. My point is, if you don't learn these skills, you're going to suffer. Be wise and listen to me. Good night, son. Go put your clothes away. Spend minimum two hours with me working. 
you know it includes food and all these other things. Post fast is every Monday? Mondays. What time? 7 to 8. For us, 6 o'clock. So we can get there on time. So we have to walk there? No. We could get a ride, actually. Yes, they picked me up. But okay. when you go, uh, next Monday it's going to be at a lady's house, the leader. And she will, she wants her, uh, Anthony to bring a hammer. Why? So they could build something. Okay. I don't know. Well, do you have to pay the first day? Theirs cost $5. Yeah, yeah, okay. Every month. I don't know if they have to pay every, but. You have a free day? Maybe. Maybe next Monday you can ask all of those questions. All right. Right now. Do your duty, my son. Your duty to God. Do what you should do. Tony Robbins says that everybody knows what they should do. But few people do it. What should you do? Right now I should finish. No, besides that. Should you listen to me? Yeah. Then do it. Work with me. There's okay. every day I have work. Yeah, that's why we gotta buy another ladder, taller one. We might even buy a scaffold or build one. Yes, my son. See you in the morning. God bless you, sir. Turn off the light, please. God bless you, my friends. Go do what you should do. What should you do? Read a book. If it's a boring book, put it aside. Write a a paragraph about that book. This book is boring because blah blah blah. It doesn't talk about this. It's, a, it's the wrong kind of book. Get the right kind of book for you. Wake yourself up. Look at the right kind of videos on, on YouTube. I look at carpentry videos. I look at inventions. I learned that Puerto Rico, a bicycle in Puerto Rico costs $500. I also saw that the Walmart, they have a bunch of Walmarts in Puerto Rico, but I couldn't see anything that they have in there. It's almost as if the internet knows that I'm right here in Florida and they don't want me to look at the prices that they have in the Walmart down there. Alright, see you next time. Thank you for being my friend by being my subscriber. Peace and love. Do something. Do a good deed every day. Alright. See you tomorrow. Good night.